I've had this 1999 Toyota 4Runner for many years and I've never had an issue. Then one day on my way to work, it started misfiring, but it didn't set a check engine light. I was able to get to work and then I just drove it home because I live pretty close. I did check for codes and it had a pending code for misfire on cylinder four, which is uh, this middle one on the driver's side bank. So naturally I just checked for spark on that one. I have a little inline spark tester and it was good. So I looked online and apparently it's fairly common for these third gen forerunners to have injector issues. So since it looked like I was getting spark, I thought I would just replace all six injectors because if one goes bad, might as well just replace all six while you're in there. So I got these uh, GB remanufacturing injectors on Rock Auto for this specific vehicle. And I also got a few other things like spark plugs and stuff because it's been a while since I've replaced them. And also I got a new fuel filter because it's a good idea to replace that when you're doing injectors. Then I swapped them all out with the new ones and they also come with new O-rings on them already. So that was kind of cool. And I replaced the intake manifold gasket, put it all back together. And then I went to replace the fuel filter and uh, I didn't have a problem with taking the old one off because I've replaced it before and used some anti-seize on the fittings. So once everything was back together and ready to go, I tried to start it and it didn't run quite right and the fuel filter was leaking like crazy even though the fittings were nice and tight and I messed around with it for quite a while. And I finally figured out that the new fuel filter that I got from rockauto.com uh, it was one of the cheaper ones, so maybe this is why. But the little nipple fittings on the filter were a slightly different size than the ones on my old filter. Uh, so I put the old one back in and it started right up, but it was still misfiring, unfortunately. So then I wanted to be extra sure every cylinder was getting good spark, so I replaced the spark plug wires with good NGK ones. I also found out the spark plugs I got from Rock Auto were not the correct ones for this car. They fit, but there's a little sign right here that says it's supposed to have the dual prong ones and not use the single prong ones. So I replaced those just in case. I don't think that would really cause much of an issue. I think it's more of a longevity thing because uh, this uses the waste spark system as uh, one coil for two plugs. So as I was replacing the spark plugs with the correct ones that are supposed to go in here, I found that cylinder two, which is this one right below cylinder four, had a lot of fuel in it. So that must be the one misfiring. So I thought, oh, maybe the injectors didn't fix it. So it must be a problem with cylinder two. And I did some research and I guess these vehicles are not that accurate at picking up the correct cylinder. So I started thinking the injectors were not the issue. Uh, and next, naturally, I did a compression test and I don't have a really, you know, super nice compression tester. It had a small leak in it, but I didn't find any issues there. Uh, cylinder two was a little on the lower side, but same as cylinder three. And with those numbers, it should still be firing. So compression was good. I was pretty happy about that, but I was still really confused because it's got fuel, it's got spark and it's got compression. Um, so I, yeah, I didn't know what to look for next exactly. At this point, I was pretty relieved because uh, with good compression numbers, everything mechanically is probably okay. I did think that there was quite a lot of fuel in that cylinder. I mean, it's not firing, so I had the car running for maybe like 10 seconds. So I thought maybe that was just normal because it, you know, it's not firing, it's putting fuel in. But one thing I also did do is take the timing cover off just to make sure it was timed correctly, like it didn't skip a tooth. Um, the belt looked fine and the marks lined up, so that wasn't the issue. But I was really stumped because if it was a problem with the mass airflow sensor or O2 sensor or something like that, or a vacuum leak, it'd be causing random misfires and not just on one specific cylinder. So next I started to think it might be a PCM or wiring related. And I took a look at the wiring diagram and I found that these things have a something called an igniter module and it does stuff with the spark plug timing and everything like that. So I was like, I'll just try it because I found a used one for 30 bucks and threw it in, didn't work. But next I removed the PCM and it's behind the glove box. I took the cover off of it and there's no water damage or anything weird going on. So next I removed the intake manifold again and removed all the connectors for the injectors. Then I used a multimeter to, these are ground controlled so I checked for uh, short to ground on mostly two, but all of them and also check to see if the grounds were shorted between like two injectors Because maybe it was like firing that injector twice and it's getting too much fuel or something weird like that Didn't find an issue So I devised a plan to see if maybe the computer was firing injector two uh, 
like it was holding it, holding it open way too long or maybe firing it you know with one of the others for some weird reason like something went crazy with the computer uh and what i did was i took these little t10 light bulbs and the pins on them i folded them down and they're really small uh, and i kind of like moved them around so i could just fit them in the connectors and i don't think you're gonna mess up the pins in the connectors at all because the ones on the t10s are like really tiny and then i set up a slow motion camera up here looking down at it and then i cranked the engine over and you can see uh, all the injectors firing when they're supposed to and I didn't find an issue with that but I did start smelling a bit of fuel and when I got out of the car I heard something like bleeding down it sounded really weird and also looking back at the footage you could see a little bit of fire coming out of only cylinder two so I looked in there and there was a puddle of fuel it turns out that injector from Rock Auto was stuck wide open and that's what that sound was it was just bleeding off all the pressure um, above the valves. So I guess the moral of the story is to not always 100% trust that a new part is going to be good. And also, you know, cheaper is not always better. They're remanufactured. Um, I don't blame Rock Auto for that. I blame the GB uh, remanufacturing company. But also what may have caused it, I kind of doubt it, is the lack of fuel pressure when I first started it because I had the problem with the fuel filter um, not being really the right one. Um, I do blame Rock Auto for that. But next, I had another issue that I was really worried about. I thought I might have uh, bent a rod on cylinder two because if you put too much liquid in a cylinder and it tries to compress it, liquid doesn't compress like air does. It's called hydrolock and basically the weakest part is going to fail. Usually it's a bent rod. But what I did is compare it to cylinder one and I did it with both, you know, uh, cranking it over by hand uh, to get it at top dead center and make a little mark on this skewer thing. It's not the most precise method, but it looked exact between the cylinders from what I could tell. It's not a micrometer kind of measurement or anything like that, but uh, at least it's not bent bad if it is bent. But I only started it a few times, so hopefully it'll be good. I'll be pretty sad if something's really screwed up because of that. I actually have no idea what caused it before. I'm assuming maybe cylinder four injector was bad. I don't know. Maybe one of the spark plugs could have been bad or the wires. I really don't know, but I did buy another one of these GB manufacturing injectors. I guess they're going to reimburse me. Um, hopefully, hopefully these things aren't going to do something like that all the time. Um, or I guess I will regret buying cheap parts. But anyways, I'll just swap it out and see what happens. Either way, that cylinder is gonna be really fuel washed. So I am gonna put a little bit of automatic transmission fluid in there, maybe the other ones, and just crank it over a little bit. But hopefully it works and we'll see what happens. Back together, uh, double checked all of it. These things definitely have a lot of vacuum hoses, but I'm gonna open the garage and let's see if it starts up. Oh wow, it runs so much smoother, runs just like it used to. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the oil change because I could definitely smell fuel on the dipstick and then I guess I'll drive it for a couple weeks and see how it goes and I'll report back. Definitely feels a bit thin, turn some 530 into 0 020. All right, so I've been driving the 4Runner for about a month now, and I haven't had any issues at all. Um, so maybe I just got unlucky with that one remanufactured injector, but the other ones have been fine. Also, one more thing, when I started it and drove it down the street, it smoked so much that when I was coming back, I was driving through like tons of smoke. It was crazy. But eventually that went away, and that was just from the ATF I put in that cylinder. And that's just going to really replace all that fuel washing on that cylinder with uh, nice new lubrication because you really don't want to drive on a fuel washed cylinder because you can actually damage the cylinder walls or the rings and I did have to take care of a few intake leaks um, and I cleaned my mass airflow sensor but I just did the emissions and it passed so I'm really glad it's back and working so hopefully uh, if you're watching this you probably have a problem with your forerunner but hopefully you can fix it um, just don't give up and I will see you guys later Peace out.